Have you ever wondered if there are any other reads out there besides Van Doren and Daddario? If so, you're in the right place. This is John Curicala, and today I'm bringing you an unboxing and first impressions of Woodstone reads. This is not scientific by any means, just my first impressions after using them for a week in my performances of The Nutcracker this past weekend. Why Woodstone? Well, someone mentioned it in the comments, so thank you, Michael Corner 3861 Around where I live, Van Doren and Daddario, mostly Van Doren, have a monopoly on the market where I live in Ohio. First, the usual YouTube disclaimer. I purchased these reeds with my own money, and these opinions are my own. I've used Van Doren reeds ever since the Paleozoic era when I was in high school. Heck, I remember getting them at the music store for $16 a box. But alas, those days are long gone. And while I can usually get at least two or three concert quality reads out of a box of V12s, I've often experienced frustration with the unpredictable break-in and the unpredictable performance from day to day, especially with the highly variable weather we have this time of year in the Midwest. Not to mention that this last batch of V12s I'm breaking in feels like I'm punching through jello. The cane feels especially mushy and unresponsive. It's very rare that I don't have to do extensive adjustment on a regular basis on any of my V12s to get them to play in a responsive and balanced manner throughout their life cycle. So what do I want in a better read? One, response. The read has to go when I tell it to go, without biting, chewing, or straining. Two, hold. The read has to hold the sound and keep it in the pocket without, well, biting, chewing, or straining. Three, Flexibility. Although I want hold in a good read, I also want it to be flexible and let me color the sound the way I want and explore different shades to the sound without, again, biting, chewing, or straining. Four, consistency. Not just in the box from read to read, but from day to day. If I balance a read throughout the break-in, I don't want to have to keep balancing it every time I pick it up to play, and I definitely do not have the patience for a 20 to 30 day break-in. I give them six to seven days, and then we go. Five, pitch. A good read has to play in tune. If you're biting, chewing, or straining, that makes playing in tune much more difficult. And finally, sound. A good read has to have a beautiful sound, which is why I've always stuck with V12s. Despite all their problems, they sound the best for me. I usually play V12 three and a halves. I played V12 fours before they started putting them in those annoying little foil pouches, and I played the blue box three and a half before that. But while I like the sound of the traditional three and a half very much, I found they generally had extremely thick tips or too much wood in the tip of the reed for a good response. I ended up spending more time than I wanted thinning and balancing the tips of those reeds for good response, which is why I moved to V12s. The Woodstone reeds allegedly are copies of the Blue Box reed, and their strength is comparable according to their chart on their website. I've been using the three and a half strength, and that's what I'll be looking at today. With all of that, Let's get to the unboxing. So, if you go onto Woodstone's website, it says, and I quote, Once you play, you can find the reasons why the Woodstone reed is loved by many players. This reed is made of the finest cane from the department of the Var area located in southeast France, which is the famous area for cultivating quality cane. Our craftsmen check out and select reeds one by one carefully so that they are very consistent. From beginners to professionals, players love this reed. Five reeds per box. Then it looks like they come in strengths two and a half, three, three and a half, and four. So if you like something really, really, really stiff, like a five or a five plus uh, V12, you might not be able to use these. But for somebody like me who prefers a more medium reed, like a V12, three and a half, these seem to fit really well. So uh, with that being said, let's take a look at the reeds. So. It's really kind of odd to see such a small box of reeds, only five reeds to a box. Okay, but the packaging, this is paper, and it doesn't have any cellophane wrap over it, which seems kind of wasteful to me, which I really appreciate. Uh, let's see, on the side, five reeds, hand selected. Uh, it says premium classic woodstone, finest French cane, hand selected, blah, 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 blah. So let's open this up. Um, just a simple seal at the bottom. So. Let's take a look and see how these are packaged. Okay, no stupid foil uh, <laughs> pouches for the reeds in here. These reeds, okay, there's something else in here. What is this? Dry sheet, don't eat. Yeah, well, 
and get rid of that. Okay, so the way these reeds are packaged, I really appreciate this because each reed comes uh, in a little, its own little paper holder, and this is looks to be perfectly recyclable. So all of this packaging is recyclable, recyclable, and seems to, yeah, have as little wasted material as possible. So that's really great. So I'll just hold the reed up to the camera and hope that that focuses. You can see very straight and even grain lines. Just for reference, here's a V12. Eh, they're actually about the same thickness, it seems. Okay, V12 on the right, wood stone on the left. Okay, now that you've seen the packaging, let's try these out of the box. I'm just going to wet the vamp in water and play them straight up without any balancing. My test setup is my usual clarinet, a Yamaha CSVR, and my mouthpiece is a very special vintage John Denman mouthpiece made from a Shedville artistic facing blank with a medium facing and close tip opening expertly applied by Ramon Witkowski, along with a lot of other work he did on this mouthpiece. The closest comparison might be one of the closer members of the Van Doren M series, M13 Lyre, M15, or perhaps the Daddario X0.
As you can hear, at least for me, these reads are super consistent from read to read. That can be good or bad. The variety of strengths of reads in a box of V12s means that several of them won't work, but there will be several that have great potential. I can think of several V12s in this last batch. When I flatten the backside, they should improve, right? Well, then why is it that some V12s get noticeably worse when I flatten the back instead of better? Or, if I balance a V12 in the back of the vamp on the third day of the break-in, why does it feel completely different the next day I try it, like I never touched it? There's only one answer I can think of in this case, and I'll just say it. Inferior cane. You can balance a reed all you want, but if the cane or raw material is subpar, then you can only do so much. You can make a reed made from poor cane play better, but it will never be a great reed. I've also had a very positive experience with Rigatti reeds. The cane in those reeds feels snappy, generally performs consistently from day to day, and has a beautiful sound. I know a lot of double reed players on both oboe and bassoon who keep Rigatti cane in their rotation. What about Van Doren? They also sell oboe and bassoon cane, but I've never actually met anyone who voluntarily uses it. I'm not going to comment on why, as I'm not an oboist or bassoonist, but it does make you wonder. If their cane is as good as they say it is, why don't double reed players use it? Now, Van Doren Knights, please stand down. I still plan on keeping Van Doren reeds in my arsenal. Despite everything that I've said, I like Van Doren reeds, and I generally know how to get the best out of them for my own needs. But if there's something that's a little more user-friendly, why not try it? So try it I did. I had four Nutcracker performances last weekend and used one box of five Woodstone reeds for those four performances. I was really satisfied. I can say that the break-in process was quite predictable. The reeds that I favored tended to stay that way throughout the break-in process, and while I did have to balance all of them like I usually do, I didn't have to do nearly as much work on them as I do with the box of V12s. These reeds were broken in over a period of seven days and stored in a traditional flat glass reed case kept in a Ziploc bag. Here are the reeds that I used. Despite the huge swings in temperature we had from below freezing up to the mid and high 50s, these reeds were great. I found three reeds that were really, really consistent from performance to performance. I might have had to flatten the backside on occasion, but once I balanced them, they generally stayed that way. I've ordered more boxes to try and will report back once I've used them a little more long term. So, should you try woodstone reeds? I say yes! What have you got to lose? There's only five in a box, and if your experience is like mine, you might have a new tool in your arsenal to help you reach your main goal, making beautiful music on the clarinet. 
I've linked two merchants below in the description if you're interested in trying them. Thank you again for tuning in. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I really enjoy seeing all the comments and interacting with all of you and really appreciate everybody who's liked and subscribed to all of my videos. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.